What's up everybody, Russell Tracy here, and just wanted to put together a quick video uh, going through some photos that I took at a basketball game last night, and uh, nothing particularly special about this basketball game in itself, but it was kind of cool for me. Uh, I've been doing this for almost 15 years or so, and I've never seen a 100-point high school basketball game. I uh, got to see one last night. I, I, if I'm remembering correctly, they scored 103 points. Uh, so kind of cool for me. And I figured I would do a video going through the photos from last night. Uh, I've already gone through Lightroom and uh, done the corrections. So now I'm just going to go into Photoshop and do the cropping because uh, I don't like doing the cropping in Lightroom. Uh, just because in case somebody asks, I was shooting this with the D5. 70 to 200. Uh, in this gym, actually, they have really good lighting, so I ended up shooting at 1 1,000th, uh, F3.2, let me see here, and ISO 4,000, I think I ended up bumping that up to 5,000. Um, pretty good lighting in here uh, overall, so typically get fairly decent results. Uh, what I want to talk about today is three tips to become a better sports photographer. Uh, there's nothing groundbreaking or shattering about these tips, but it's something that you might want to think about if you want to get into uh, sports photography. So I'm going to go through these photos. I don't know if I'm going to get through all the photos by the time I finish this, but it is what it is. So if I don't, you can check out my website see some more of the photos, check out my Instagram, stuff like that. Uh, let's get started. Uh, so the first thing, if you want to be a better sports photographer, and I, I hate to actually mention this, but you have to have appropriate equipment. Now, I've done a video on this in the past. Uh, I don't really like giving out recommendations, but if you want to see... Uh, the video that I've done on uh, equipment for sports photography, I, I do have a video, uh, but the basic overview is you need to have a camera that can handle low light because most high school sports are going to be shot in low light. This was indoors. Um, and typically you want something with a fast fixed aperture so you can actually uh, shoot in the low light. Um, if you want to check out the rest of the stuff that I have on this, you can check out that video. I'll put a link in the description, uh, for basketball, I typically shoot with a 70 to 200 2.8 and for football, I typically shoot with my 400 28 and my 70 to 200 2.8. Now you should be seeing a theme here. If you want to get into sports photography, uh, the number one lens that I would suggest if you're getting started would be a 72-200 f2.8 lens. Uh, personally, I think that's a lens that should be in every sports photographer, generally every photographer's kit out there. Um, it's just a fantastic lens. You can use it for so much. Uh, like I said, check out the video for the rest of what I have to say on that. Now, as far as actual sports go. Now, sports is difficult um, in the fact that there's so many different sports, and if you don't know what's going on, uh, you're going to have a difficult time photographing it. So tip number two uh, would be learn the sport that you want to shoot. Uh, go to games. Uh, just watch the games or get on YouTube and watch uh, game videos on YouTube. Um, learn, you, you, you need to learn the sport because if you learn the sport, uh, a couple things will happen. One, you'll be able to anticipate the action. You'll be able to anticipate what's going to happen. Uh, you'll be ready for it. Um, another thing that you can do is, and I highly suggest this along with watching, uh, actual game footage, I would watch videos on, uh, the rules of the sport, learn the rules, learn how it's played. Um, that way, when you're, when you're shooting and you see something, you know, if it's going to be kind of an important, an important part of the game or not. Um, 
Now, obviously, if you're just doing general action, it doesn't really matter. But if you're doing this at a journalistic level, uh, if you're working for a media outlet or uh, something like that where you have to write captions, it's going to be very helpful if you actually know the rules. So if there's a penalty or something like that, you can actually put that in the caption. Uh, so that's tip number two. Uh, learn the rules, learn the sport, know how it's played. Uh It'll help you anticipate the action. It'll help you anticipate what's going to happen during the game. Uh, the third tip that I have is more towards uh, making yourself a better sports photographer. So uh, in, in the video that I talked about in tip number one, which is use the appropriate equipment, uh, one of the things that I talked about was having a camera that has a fairly high continuous frame rate. So you can shoot nine frames a second, 10 frames a second, 11 frames a second, whatever it happens to be. Uh, and I talk about you want that because you can take a sequence, short little burst sequence and anticipate, well, not, excuse me, you can take a, a sequence of photos and you can uh, pick the peak of the action. Now that's all well and good, but if you're first starting out, do not rely on uh, motor driving uh, to get photos. Um, there was a recent post that I saw asking how many photos people take during certain sports events. You know, what 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 sport and how many photos do you take? And I saw people that were taking uh, like a football game, and they were taking like three thousand, four thousand photos at a football game. And quite frankly, I feel like that is way, way overshooting the game. Uh, a football game in particular is, uh, well, except for high school. Well, high school, it's even worse, but uh, it, it's an hour long. So in that hour, if you're taking, uh, so that's 60 minutes. 60 minutes, there's 60 seconds in a minute. That means you're taking... Uh, Six times six is 36, so 3,600 photos, uh, 3,600 seconds in the game. Uh, if you're taking 4,000 photos, that means you're taking over one photo per second during game action. Uh, either one of two things is happening here. Uh, either you're motor driving the crap out of your camera, or you have no idea what you're doing, or a combination of both. Um, so my tip is slow down. Uh, in basketball and sports in general, uh, it, it, something to make you better, to anticipate, uh, going along with the tip number two, to be able to anticipate the action, put your camera in single shot. Put your camera in single shot and actually consciously try to visualize the best photo focus on your composition focus on trying to capture the peak action in a single shot uh if you can do that now i did this last night um i got kind of bored during the second game and i put the camera into single shot and i started at uh 400 photos in i, I took a total of 900 photos last night between the two games. Um, uh, 400 photos in. I switched over to single shot. And I consciously tried to make an effort to wait for the peak action, push the shutter, release the shutter. Uh, and quite frankly, the photos that I got from when I did that, uh, they came out generally better. I had more keepers than I did when I was motor driving. Now that's kind of obvious because if you motor drive and you take a, a series of like six shots or something like that, one's going to be good. So out of the, out of the six shots that you took, you're going to keep one. Now, if you're consciously trying to frame the best possible image and you're conscious, consciously trying to pick the peak action, uh, it's going to do two things. One, you're going to have less photos to go through at the end. Uh, 
but it's also going to going back into tip number two, it's going to make you consciously think of when the peak action is going to be. So you don't have to rely on motor driving to try and hope that you get the peak action of the game. Uh, once you're once you get that if you're in single shot and you can nail that peak action nail that focus every time uh switch over into like continuous low you know take take shots in continuous low so you can get that start getting that series but what that's shooting in con- uh single shot as opposed to continuous it's going to force you to to become a better a better photographer because you're going to have to think about what you're doing. Um, uh, some people are probably going to disagree with that. That's okay. Uh, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Uh, that's what I do every once in a while, just to kind of reset myself, uh, get back into, Hey, don't rely on motor driving. Don't rely on, uh, the camera to get the peak action, actually think about what you're doing, pick and choose your shots. And like I said, uh, I took uh, about a hundred photos last night towards the end of the game. And out of those hundred photos, I probably picked, uh, 40 of them because they were just overall, they were just better action. They were better composed. I wasn't relying on the camera to do the work for me. I was actually thinking about what I was doing. Uh, At this point, I'm rambling. So I'm going to get off here, finish up the rest of these photos. Uh, If you have any comments, questions, anything that you want to see, leave a comment below. All my contact is in the description. Uh, If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so, Go ahead and check out my other videos. Hit that subscribe button. This is Russell Tracy from Russell Tracy Photography. Have a good day.